Reviewing the Surface Pro 4 is so much easier than previous generations. I don't have to spend half the video explaining what it is. Is it a tablet that can replace your desktop? Is it a desktop that can go with you? Is it a foldable, dockable, transformer, tablet, top type device? You already know what the Surface Pro is. It's in its fourth iteration. Uh, it's gotten thinner, it's gotten lighter, it's gotten faster, and it's brought a few high-tech friends with it that make it a complete laptop or tablet experience. But most importantly, is it a device that you wanna buy? I'm gonna do my best NFL coach impersonation and show you everything there is to know about the Surface Pro 4. I'm John Renger from Techno Buffalo, and if you haven't guessed it yet, this is our review of the Surface Pro 4. As I do with all my reviews, let me start with a disclaimer. I use this as my daily computer at home for 13 days. I want to make sure I really knew everything about it and how it performed, and especially how it performed versus the previous generation Surface Pro 3. Uh, so let's start with the design. Uh, it's very familiar design, but Microsoft has improved. What already was a pretty impressive look and feel. Uh, it weighs very little uh, at 1.73 pounds or 786 grams. By comparison, the iPad Pro weighs 1.57 pounds or 713 grams. So for not much extra weight, you are getting a full-fledged computer. And that's really what the service is all about. It's no compromises. You have a tablet when you want it and a full computer when you want it. Uh, using Windows 8 was a little bit simpler, I think, as a tablet. You had that large start menu. It's changed a little bit with Windows 10, but it's much easier for actual everyday usage as opposed to just normal media consumption. So if you want to do anything that's not watching Netflix or, or Hulu, uh, you're really going to appreciate, I think, what the Surface Pro can do. Other than that, it's thinner and lighter than previous generation, but it's going to look very familiar. Uh, still a big fan of the kickstand. You now have infinite angles. Hello. So you can keep it on your lap really any way you want, and you'll find a position that's comfortable. Uh, it goes relatively flat too, so if you want to take advantage of the Surface Pen and do some one-note action, you can. Uh, I'm not a graphic designer, I can barely draw a stick figure, I've never been that into the one-note ecosystem, but if you are, you're going to appreciate the redesigned Surface Pen as well. One simple click, it's going to go ahead and launch OneNote, and if you're a student, for example, go ahead and scribble notes and it'll work really well. One thing I appreciated was handwriting recognition. Uh, I was very easily able to translate my chicken scratch into actual writing uh, and save it on the device. If that's important to you, it'll work well, and also, you now can attach via magnets on the side of the tablet. All right, so what about performance on this? And something this size, it's kind of tough to think what it's good for and what it's not good for, but I've boiled it down for you uh, and who this would be right for. If you're the kind of person that's doing a lot of 3D rendering, where you do a lot of video editing or heavy gaming, uh, this is not going to be the device for you. Uh, if you're the type of person that does a lot of word processing, maybe you'll play some light games, you watch a lot of YouTube videos, if you do some spreadsheet work, but you're not doing anything heavy 3D, uh, it's going to be a really capable computer. And it's not to say that it can't do some light gaming. I was very easily able to get some StarCraft going. You could download Steam, um, play some Arkham Knight if you wanted to. Uh, on average settings, you can do it, but it's not really what it's meant for. Uh, and even when I was playing games and I was kicking up the processor, uh, I really didn't have any, any heat issues either. There's vents all the way along the sides of this, which is a paid seat. And also, I very rarely ever heard any sort of fan noise. Uh, this thing ran extremely cool, uh, which is not the case with Surface Pro 3. One big difference versus Surface Pro 3 is in the screen. Microsoft is calling their new technology PixelSense, which is just Microsoft lingo for the screen looks awesome, and it does. It's a resolution of 2736 by 1824, and it's got a 287 PPI, and it looks incredible. I never thought the Surface Pro 3 screen looked bad. Looking at it next to this looks incredible. Picture it like shopping for a TV and you got two TVs up on the wall in the store. One is showing like a good 1080 picture and one showing like a ridiculously awesome 4K picture. That's what this looks like. It looks like the 4K screen. It is absolutely incredible and the difference uh, is astounding. Colors are rich, blacks are really black. Uh, even better for visibility and direct sunlight as well. If you're a student or you like to work outside, I think you're gonna appreciate that. I also like the 3.2 aspect ratio on the Surface Pro 4 as well. Something to sit in light, I was obviously concerned about battery life. How is it going to be? Uh, I got a little less battery life than advertised. Um, I got about five to six hours of battery life out of here as opposed to the eight or nine you should get with video usage. But again, that's gonna vary on your usage. What you set the screen brightness at, whether you have things running in the background or not. So bear that in mind. Let's say you've got a Surface Pro 3 or older. You might be like a burst signer here and think your type cover is so awesome. But you have not yet experienced the type cover 4. It's thinner, it's got a new typing mechanism, and the trackpad actually feels good. I suppose you could say the only thing that's changed is everything. 
So it's not cheap though, 129 bucks. It should probably be rolled into the price. And there's even a more expensive option that includes a fingerprint sensor to unlock your keyboard. We don't have that one here, but everything you liked about the older generations is just better here. The typing experience feels more like a traditional keyboard. New mechanism underneath can, gonna make it feel like an actual laptop keyboard. Uh, the improved trackpad from size to the multi-touch is just smooth. The best thing I can say about it is you're not even gonna notice that it's an external accessory. Uh, I will say though, if you do wanna use it, it's gonna be pretty strong. The magnets can hold it. So you don't have to worry about dropping it. I was really always concerned about whether or not I was gonna drop it. And in fact, I was a little nervous when I did this demonstration, but as you can see, it's pretty good. It's supportive and it clicks on with a really satisfying, and it clicks on with a really satisfying clicky noise, which I like, I like noises. Uh, if you're thinking about getting a Surface Pro 4, the type cover is a must have accessory. We didn't have the one in the fingerprint sensor, so I can't verify how well that works. Uh, but I will say this coupled with the backlight on it now uh, makes for a really enjoyable typing experience. So Microsoft's known throwing in a buzzword or two. The one for this guy though is lapability, which is their made up marketing term for how well this thing gonna fit on your lap. Cause if you look at it, you wouldn't think this is gonna be overly like ergonomic on your, on your lap. Well, friends, there's only one way to test lap ability, and that's to put it on your lap. To the lap ability mobile. So what about value? Uh, starting at about 900 bucks and going over well over 2,000. This is not the most reasonably priced computer you can get. It's not the cheapest computer you can get. And it's probably not even the best value that you can get if you want a nice touchscreen Windows 10 convertible type device. Uh, who should get this if you want a premium feeling, high performing device. The Surface Pro is still the king of that pack. The magnesium feel looks absolutely incredible. The screen is gorgeous. You're getting a device that's going to wear well. I can attest for generations of this wearing extremely well uh, over a lot of travel. I traveled all over my Surface Pro 3 and it looks brand new. Um, you're gonna appreciate what this can do. But again, the caveat, if you're doing a lot of 3D rendering, you wanna do heavy games on it, then this is not gonna be the one you wanna look for. Maybe you wanna look at the Surface Book or another option. Uh, but if you just want a computer to do general computing things on it that maybe don't involve gaming, uh, this is gonna be a great device. So the question I asked at the beginning, would I buy it? Uh, this gets a very solid recommendation to buy. Uh, it's an incredible device, it performed as well as expected. It's faster than the last generation. The screen is gorgeous. Battery life was good enough uh, to last for a full day. It does charge quickly, uh, I, I should mention. Uh, this is a great computer and one I would happily carry with me for the next year, two years, or through four years if I was going to university or college. You can get a ton of configurations. I'd recommend getting at least a Core i5 model. I think that's gonna give you the best performance for value. That's actually what we have here that we tested. A Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM, and it worked very, very well. So what do you guys think about the Surface Pro 4? Is it, is it worthwhile? Is it good for you? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I've been a big fan of the Surface line and this one just continues that trend. One caveat though to consider to our buy recommendation is you might want to consider now discounted Surface Pro 3, but it's still a very solid uh, performing computer. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. I'll see you guys in the next video.